Hello everyone, my name is Yu Chen Ding, and I'm a software engineer in Google Bread. Today I'm going to talk about the detail of the new TensorFlow Lite Converter. So to set up the right expectation, this talk is not an introduction of TensorFlow Lite, so I'm assuming the audience already know the TensorFlow Lite a little bit. I'm also not going to explain the detail of MIR. You don't have to understand MIR before this talk, but if you want to learn more, I will recommend you to find more resources on the internet, including the official website of TensorFlow Lite and MIR. And there is also inside the TensorFlow playlist on YouTube. So today I'm going to talk about the TensorFlow Lite converter. So I will start from why do we need a converter? I will probably spend like 10 minutes here. And I will explain what does the converter do in the very high level. And why did we decide to work on new converter in the past few quarters? And how to use the new converter? And then I will get into the deeper part that I will explain how the converter is implemented internally. I will talk a little bit about what's MIR and how do we, why do we choose to use it? And I will talk about the detail of the new converter. Overview. Okay, this first question I want to talk about is why do we want, need a converter? So the short answer is we need a converter to convert TensorFlow model to TensorFlow Lite model format. And this essentially is print nothing. Why do we need to do this? Why do we need another format for TensorFlow Lite? To answer this question, we may need to look at what's the advantage of TensorFlow Lite. There are actually many. So TensorFlow Lite is TensorFlow's open source machine learning solution for mobile devices and small devices. Uh, it's small and it's fast and it has other benefits like the small memory footprint and uh, low power consumption. But if we f focus on what small and fast, it has small binary size, small model size, and the fast startup time, that's really important if you want, want to run some real-time application, like if you want to start doing voice recognition in an app while loading the model and start running it immediately. And invocation fast, so each machine learning like model, the latency to run each machine learning model is fast. So why do I want to talk about this? Why is this related to the conversion and the model format? So let's think about how do we achieve these benefits and advantages. The TensorFlow Lite has a small binary size because we try really hard to reduce the binary size of dependencies. And we also adapt some programming practice for small binary size. Like we are very careful when using C++ templates. It provides small model size because we support important features like quantization. And the sparsity is working in progress. The startup time is fast because we are using memory map model for memory map feature to load the model for model file. And we do not need to pass the entire file before invoking. The first invocation is achieved by we are doing some fusing some apps together and providing some implementations as arguments for ARM CPU or GPU or HTPU. And I'm bringing this up because actually many of these are related to the model format and the schema. Okay, I'm going to focus on a few things that's most relevant and try to explain this. So when choosing the model format for TensorFlow Lite, we access different options. TensorFlow uses protocol buffer, says a uh, open source serialization for format library provided by Google. TensorFlow Lite uses use thread buffer. It's also an open source library provided by Google. Back in 2017, we accessed both options and we found it introduced at least one megabyte of the binary size to use protocol buffer, while uh, TensorFlow Lite, the initial version, including the thread buffer and everything, if not including the kernels, is only below 150k. So it actually makes a diff big difference regarding what library do we use. So by having our own model format, it, uh, it also allows us to move faster to improve to implement important features like quantization, so we can just add the field we need into the model schema. So the first startup is going to be achieved by a combination of a few things. 
The first is the flare buffer doesn't require to parse the entire file before using it. And we combine this advantage with the strategies that TensorFlow that is loading the model file with the memory map feature provided by operating system. So technically, TensorFlow Lite just do the MF OS core and then parse all the tensor metadata and the node metadata and start running the model. So technically, because it doesn't even touch the constant that's probably occupy the majority of the model size, uh, it, it doesn't even need to load all the data to the physical memory, depending on how the operating system increment the memory map feature. So the last thing I want to mention is the app fusion. So if we think about like the Keras Conf 2D as an example, if you define a Keras Conf 2D layer, uh, under the hood, it will define maybe three or more apps, like the Conf 2D, BIOS, and Redu. And if you are on desktop or um server, you can do some, uh, after loading the model, you can do some future optimization or even cheat compilation to optimize this pattern. But uh, on mobile, it's much harder because of the power constraint and the computation power constraint. So we want to make a model format that we can load and easily run it as is really efficiently. So by having our own model format, it also enable us to define our own operations. And so we define the operation conf 2 d that's fusing all the operations together. It's taking input filter bytes as input and the activation function becomes an attribute of the conf 2 d TFI conf 2 d so I think I just provided enough information regarding why it's important uh, to have our own model format. That's why we need a converter, and that's why the converter is important. Okay, so taking a step back, so what does the converter do in a very high level? So if you are a user of TensorFlow Lite, you only need to understand this. So TensorFlow Lite converter takes a TensorFlow model as input, and it produces TensorFlow Lite model as output. The TensorFlow model contains TensorFlow apps, and TensorFlow Lite model contains TensorFlow app, TensorFlow Lite apps. Now, the later is probably just an incremental detail that the user doesn't even need to know. So that's all the user need to do. You need to know. So why did we choose to work on a new converter or say new converter backend? So our intention is to provide better developer and user experience and provide more features. And we found it's not easy to extend the legacy conversion backend to fulfill all the requirements we want, like supporting TensorFlow functional control flow. Technically, it requires to load multiple TensorFlow functions in TensorFlow 2.0 into the conversion process. And we also want to provide a better error tracking experience that if anything is fair, if anything is failing in the conversion process, we want to point back to the original Python code where the node is generated for better debugging experience, like a real compiler. The other thing includes techni technical depth, like the old conversion code actually crash the process when certain types of, types of error happens. And as a workaround, uh, the implementing detail is if you are running the TFLite converter inside Python, we actually create a subprocess to do the conversion. And we access many options, including improving the existing code, write a new one, or leverage other things in TensorFlow. And we found that the problem we are dealing with is really similar to compiler, because we are trying to load the program and do some transformation and optimization and produce another program in another format. So that's exactly what, what the compiler do. So our decision was to leverage the MLIR platform to make it easier to implement this and utilize other features and code in TensorFlow, like TensorFlow ecosystem. I will explain MLIR more in the following slides. Okay, so how to use the new converter? It's really easy that just upgrade to the TensorFlow 2.2 or above. So the new converter is actually a backend that's completely hidden from users. So we want, ideally this should be a pure upgrade and you just upgrade to TensorFlow 2.2 or use the Lightly build. And then everything should work as is or be a better experience. 
So I want to start from explaining a little bit of the MIR. But as I said, if you want to understand more, there are more information and resources on the internet. So MIR, the MIR is not machine learning. It's multi-level intermediate representation. The official definition is uh, it's a, bit, a little bit hard to understand, but it's essentially a collection of the components, software components that enable, it's called progressive lowering of machine learning operations. Okay, let me explain with our use case. For the purpose of the tensorflow direct converter, uh, we're focused on a few things, such as the dialects and transformations. So MAR allows us to define dialects. So it's like it's pretty similar to in a compiler, you can have multiple representation of the program. You can have the C++ syntax tree, you can have, a, have the assembly language. Here we have a dialect says tensor for that tensor for dialect that we just reuse, says mapping to the tensor for up semantic. And for the purpose of the tensor for that converter, we define our own tensor for that dialect. And our goal is converting from tensor for dialect to tensor for that dialect. I will have concrete examples in the following slides. To, to convert from TensorFlow to TensorFlow Lite, we need to have a conversion. We call it transformation passes. Similarly, we are also using TensorFlow passes, and we are also defining our own passes. In addition to this, MIR is also used for other purposes, like we have a GPU dialect and other things like a TPU, SRL dialect. That enable us to convert in TensorFlow to other to target other platforms and hardware. So the last nice thing of using the shared inf compiler infrastructure is we are reusing other functionality and code sets implemented for other purpose for this converter. So let's get into what's the how is the converter implemented and what's the implementation detail. I just talked about dialect and let's take a look what the dialect exactly is. So the dialect is like a combination of the logical combination of the operation and types. And we are using a definition that's called ODS, operation definition specification. And we are defining it with a language that's called table gen, which is a LVM project. But here are a lot of confusion terminology here. So if you want, you can learn more on the internet, but let's ignore the terminology and look at the concrete example for now because it's easier. In TensorFlow, so there's an add up that's adding two tensors together and produce one output. So it's defined as this. So we are defining a TensorFlow add up in TensorFlow style that where the operation is add, and it takes two inputs, and each input can be a number of string tensor, and it produces one output, and the output is uh, also a number of string tensors, tensor. And throughout the rest of the slide, I will put some code snippet, and at the bottom, there may be a link uh, that you can find the code on GitHub. Okay, so uh, it also provides some mechanism to write some extra annotation like we know the add up doesn't have a side effect so the compiler may do smarter things to optimize it and the result is broadcastable so it doesn't care if the it doesn't care about this is layout so it doesn't care if the input is nhwc or nzhw it's a, just a pure add mathematic operation this is essentially how what does it take to define the apps schema or say function up signature says so understandable by MRIR. Okay, let's take a look at a slightly more complex example. So TensorFlow also have an average pool operation. It takes one tensor as input and produces one tensor as output. And it, in addition, it has a few extra attributes. Like it has a kernel size and strides and padding data format attribute. The kernel size needs to be an integer 64 array where it need to have at least four elements or more. Similar constraint applies to try. The padding needs to be string, that's so either same or valid. So this is a slightly more complex definition of an app, but it's still not really hard to understand. 
So how do we define a TensorFlow Light Up? So TensorFlow Light Up is defined in the TensorFlow TF air dialect. And everything is pretty similar. So we are defining a TensorFlow Light Average Pool 2D app because uh, the two systems have different app definition and semantic. You can notice the app name is essentially different. In TensorFlow, we call it ABG Pool. And in TensorFlow Light, we call it Average Pool 2D. It also takes one input and produces one output. The other attributes are represented in a slightly different ways. And this schema exists before the converter exists. So we are we are not using the uh, array to represent the kernel size. We are using an integer to represent the kernel height and weight, and using an integer to represent the stride height and weight. In addition, I just mentioned that TensorFlow Light sometimes provides the functionality to fuse the activation function into an app. So there is an HR attribute that's called the activation function, and it's essentially a TF Light attribute in now, where AF means activation function. So we just I just described how to define the dialect, but the next thing is how to use it. And by the explaining that, I'm going to also going to explain what the converter is actually do internally in the process. So this is the slide that I just used like 10 minutes ago. So in high level, the TensorFlow Light converter takes the TensorFlow model as input and produces the TensorFlow Light model as the output. If we will enlarge the middle block a little bit, we want to know how it's implemented internally. So now I'm using some color coding because there will be more complex things. The orange box means TensorFlow things, and the blue box starts to mean TensorFlow Live things. And essentially, the converter has a module that's called TensorFlow Importer that's importing a TensorFlow model from a safe model format or a graph dev format to an MRR program that's in TensorFlow dialect. And it goes through a bunch of conversion optimization transformation processes. And then it produces a MRR program in TensorFlow Light dialect. Then it goes through the TF Light exporter and produces a TensorFlow Light model. And the TF Light exporter is pretty naive because the structure of the TensorFlow Light dialect, uh, MRR program in TensorFlow Light dialect is essentially isomorphic to the TensorFlow Light free buffer. So most of the complexity are, is implemented in the bubble. Before getting into the bubble, so let's talk about what a uh, MRR program looks like. So imagine that we are defining a very simple TensorFlow model as an example. We're defining a TensorFlow model that have only one app in the model that's an average pool. And we use the TensorFlow importer to load the TensorFlow model into the MRR program in TF dialect, and the code will become this. It's like an in-memory in -memory representation where there's a function. In the function, there's only one instruction. The instruction is calling the uh, something called tf average pool. That's just the tf. That's just the what we defined in the tf dialect, and it's using the fields that we just defined in the tf average pool, including the kernel size, padding, and strides. And it takes one tensor as input and produce one tensor as an output. And you can see some HR annotation like the data type and the shape in the program. This is a simplified example, and the real model may contain 10 or hundreds or thousands of instruction like this. And similarly, our goal is to generate something like in TensorFlow Light dialect that has a TensorFlow Light instruction in the code and using the fears that we define in TensorFlow Light Dialect. And the entire goal of the conversion process is making this conversion. This is the simplest case, but we have much more complex cases later. But for this simple case, because of the fear are not mapping one to one, so we need to do the transformation like grab the second element from the array and fill it in the, as the filter height and grab the third element and fill it as a filter width, and so on. Essentially, we need to do a mapping between the different schema. OK, so let's get 
back to the big picture. So I just show you how the program in this orange box and the blue box will look like. And you may wonder what's happening inside the bubble. The short answer is a lot. So after importing get to the TensorFlow dialect format, we are doing some TensorFlow passes, Seth doing some optimization and transformation and maybe removing some unused program from the code. And it still generates a tensor for that, that, that program. And we call a pass that's called prepare PF for it's, it's essentially transforming the program to be easier to get converted to tensor for that. And then we call uh, and then we execute the pass that's called legalized PF. It's legalized is a compiler term. Essentially it means to, trying to convert instructions from the TensorFlow dialect to TensorFlow dialect as much as possible. So the result is legal for TensorFlow Lite. After this, we did a, a bunch of other transformation passes, like the, as you mentioned, that there are certain types of the kernel fusion, uh, fusion that's already doable in TensorFlow Lite, like the fusion the entire keras layer into one TensorFlow Lite apps. And there are other Seen like a quantization or other paths that can only be done in TensorFlow Lite layer. After that, we go through the TensorFlow Lite exporter to generate a TensorFlow Lite model in the free buffer format. Okay, so this is the idea world. Yeah, but if we also consider the real implementation, it's more like this. So the first thing is the, is the prepared here sometimes just generate a TensorFlow Lite instruction because it's easier to implement this way. The other important thing is we support a feature that's called select TensorFlow app in TensorFlow Lite. That means the TensorFlow Lite has the capability to run TensorFlow apps, kernels, if you are willing to pay additional binary size. That means the final program here may be a mixture of TensorFlow Lite and TensorFlow. But ideally, or if you are using the default TensorFlow Lite runtime, it should be purely TensorFlow Lite, TFAR Direct. So the last topic in the talk is about transformation. So we just talked about we want to go from TensorFlow to TensorFlow Lite Direct and perform a bunch of optimization. But how do we do it and how is it defined? The first thing you may be interested in is what kind of transformation passes are we running? Uh, the answer is a lot. So the TensorFlow Lite Converter currently runs 20 to 35 passes. And some of the passes may be duplicated and we run it multiple times. So the answer is in the TF and the TFT where TFT where passes.cc. And I'm making a simplified code snippet here. So essentially we are first we are at running a few TensorFlow passes or generic passes to optimize the graph and maybe remove some dead code. And we call the prepare TF pass to make it easier to convert to TF Lite. And we call legalized TF pass. And ideally, after this, everything should be in TensorFlow Lite direct, unless you are using the static TFR feature. And then we run other optimization and quantization passes in TF Lite. So this four chunk essentially maps to this four block, the TF general pass, prepare TF and legalize TF and TF life general passes. And the next question is how are these passes written? There are essentially two ways to do this. The first way is also write it in, in the table gen format. And we're using the definition that's called DRR, that's called declarative rewrite rule. The benefit is it's much easier to write and it's more concise. And the other benefit is it's declarative, so we can also do some program analysis after this is written. The alternative is write is in C++. Uh, it's a bit more robust, but the pros is you can implement any logic, so it's better for implementing com implementing complex logic. If you write it in the table gen, it's actually also generating C++ code. So let's look at a concrete example. So let's start from the easiest example. So essentially what this is doing is pet means pattern. 
So here we are defining a pattern matching rule. It's saying if we see a tensor flow run the operation with one argument, replace it with the tensor flow light run the operation with the same argument, and reroute the output of the tensor flow run to the output of tensor flow light run. It's a very concise way to write a very simple pattern matching rule. So the similar thing can be applied to pretty much most unary uh, operations. And a slightly more complex uh, example is both TensorFlow add and TensorFlow add v2 operation can be mapped to TensorFlow light add operation because TensorFlow add light add support both semantic. So we can just write two pattern matching rules that going to the same destination. The TensorFlow that add, as I said, many of the TensorFlow that operation has the functionality to embed a activation function as an attribute. But because TensorFlow doesn't support activation function, so by default, we should write a, uh, by default, the activation function should be none. And later we can have another a uh, transformation rule trying to fuse other apps of activation function into this attribute. I have a example for that later. So let's look at the slightly complex example. So this is the average pool example I just used earlier when I try to explain the dialect ML program. So this is a, a little bit a transformation that's a little bit complex but we can still express it in the table chain in a very concise way. So um, essentially, because TensorFlow and TensorFlow Lite has slightly different app semantic and different schema, here we need to check if the kernel size has four elements because TensorFlow Lite's average for 2D only, only supports this case. And because TensorFlow Lite's kernel, aka filter, only support with height and width, we need, we need to ensure that the first element and fourth element is one. So to do this, we implemented a helper function in C++ that's called is int list one x y one. It's essentially checking if this integer list has four elements and if the first and fourth are one. So if it's not, it will just reject the pattern matching. So this kind of helper function can be defined in C++ or, or table gen. And we, ha we have other checking like the is data format NHWC because we are only accepting the NHWC format. After that, we want to do something like extracting the second element to get field into the filter height field in the tensor for that schema. We do this by like implementing a function called is tried i32 as taking an in index and get the data out of the kernel size and fill it into the filter height field. So this is essentially a slightly more complex visualization to rule written in the same table geo format. If you want to learn more, you can look at the legalizepartner.tt that's also available in GitHub open source. So another interesting Thing is the pattern matching rule for a fusion. So let's look at this example. If we find a pattern where we have a maximum up, says taking any input as the first input, and says taking the negative one constant as the second input, and the output of the maximum is fitted into the minimum up operation, whereas the second input is a constant one. If we find this pattern, we can replace everything with a red one operation. Let's look at how to express this in the table journey. So we can read this program by reading the innermost parentheses. That is, we're defining a pattern where if we see a maximum operation, so if we see a maximum operation that takes an input and the second input that is constant, and the value of the constant is exactly negative one. And the output of the maximum operation is the first input of the minimum operation, where the second input of the minimum operation is a constant one, where the value of one is the floating point value one. 
So essentially, this piece of code describes a pattern that matches this software where input can be anything. Then we just replace it with a red one with the input. That's another example of writing a really concise pattern matching rule. This is the last example I'm giving for the transformation rule in table gen. So we can also do something such that template made programming, sorry, template in table gen. The intention of this transformation is if we find the convolution 2D and followed by a ReLU1 operation, what the, and another criteria is the activation function attribute in the TensorFlow.conf2D was known before the transformation, we can fuse the expression function like radio one into the convolution app by rewriting its attribute, which is essentially a enum or a string in some other representation. How do we describe the transformation rule? So we started by matching a conf to the operation. It takes an input and filter and bias tensor input and it has a bunch of other attributes. And we are, most of these inputs are starting with a dollar sign. It's like a placeholder and or variable in the pattern matching rule. So that can be anything. But there's one thing that's not starting with dollar sign, says the activation function. That means this field must be a TFL activation function now before the pattern matching. Otherwise, we will just reject the pattern and we will not match this pattern. So if we see this pattern and the output of this is fitted into an input of the activation function. So look at the this parenthesis that close the conf2d and the output of conf2d is the input of the activation function. If we find this pattern, we can just replace it with the conf2d with all the inputs and the attributes remain the same but just rewrite the activation function attribute from num to the new activation function attribute. After defining this template or it's called multi-class in table gen, we can create multiple instances of the template and we can create a rule says mapping redo one to TensorFlow activation function redo and redo six to TensorFlow activation function redo six. So by writing this, we are creating three pattern matching that, that can handle the case no matter if it's red or red one or red or six here. Quick question. Yeah, sure. Uh, what does the has one use mean? Oh yeah, sure. That's a great question. So the so there's some implement detail syntax here, and the current dollar comes to the out means the entire output of the comes to the has the alias says the comp to the out. And everything we put in the breaks, breaks, breaks after the pattern match rule is some extra allocation and constraint. And this, this rule is saying that we will only do the pattern matching if the comp to the out is only consumed by one other operation. So essentially means there's no other link from the output of the comp 2 d to another operation. Ah, so yeah, this is what it means. Yeah, it can uh, it can be future optimized, but this is good enough for our current use cases. Yeah, thanks for the question. So essentially the entire converter is built upon many and many of these conversion rules, some of simple and some of more, more complex. And we have like many com many convert uh, transformation passes and each pass each pass contain many conversion rules and or patterns or other transformations and that's how we build a converter. Yeah. So if you want, you you can also write this transformation in C plus plus. I'm not going through all the details here, but essentially you can do similar things like you can check if the activation function is was known before the transformation. Is essentially similar to this piece of the transformation. So this piece of the transformation says checking one attribute, yeah, written in a different way. Yeah. 
to use table gen, it will automatically generate the code that is for you. But if you are implementing something that's really complex, it's probably easier to do it just in C++. That's everything I want to cover in my talk. And I'm hoping that uh, by the end of the talk, you have a basic understanding about why do we need a converter. And if you want to understand the inter converter internal implementation, if you want to debug the converter or you want to make some contribution to the converter, you have a sense about what piece of code should you try to look at and change and get started. And says all. Does anyone have questions? So I, I guess I have a high level question that maybe uh, like it's more like an hour hour question. Uh, so the, the the basic pattern matching looks like very much like any like functional program language uh, that has data types and the pattern matches. So I'm curious what's the motivation for the original decision to make a new like a new infrastructure around this. Uh, this are, I, can, I can get it. Uh, the, the, the pattern matching capability in MLR is actually more powerful than the Euro pattern matching capabilities in functional languages. But I'm still like, curious why uh, we didn't pick uh, existing like functional language in the first place. Uh, yeah, that's a great question. So I'm not from MLR team, so I can only answer based on, on my best understanding. So uh, I think we did take a existing language that because table gen was a part of LVM and it was it existed long before the MLR existed. Yeah. So I think they choose to use table gen because it uh, it works very well for LVM for a long time. And uh, I think that's the, I guess that's the major reason, yeah. And we are taking an existing, then existing technology that work well for the compiler transformation and when not inventing another new language for this.